Assalamu alaikum everybody welcome to and the first video actually on CSC 471 system analysis and design also known as SAD anyway in this video this is the first lecture actually but however it's still kind of like knowing the course because this course is so important or you can say even though it's theoretical it's so important that the first lecture or the first week is dedicated to understanding the course only and I'll also be telling you about some things about this course that we have to do so first of all system analysis and design what exactly does that mean the things you're seeing over here is the same as the introduction video so let me just speak it out you know you want to create a software for a hotel server or something so this software you're going to make or this website you're going to make is going to have records of hotels how many people came in how many went out how many gone crazy how many uses the lift uh, whatever stuff like that you know so the more function you add uh, it depends on the amount of functions even the quality also I don't just want assumptions I want accurate records you know like CSC 330 maybe so I want great databases I don't I just don't want you to like create tables with a docx and something you know so the more you want quality and quantity it's a very hard thing for a programmer or a group of programmers to think okay now there are many ways to do this for example you have many programming languages then again you have many algorithms then again you have many ways to do it and that's also kind of like giveaway of algorithms but still you know okay how about three of us do it you divide the work into half we'll work on this part and you work on that part no 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 wait maybe all of us should start at the same time so there's internal algorithms of the code and there's algorithm outside you know how people deal with this or maybe there are people like you're given a project and in a group and you're the only one who wants to work and the others one nah okay I'll just tell me before you know the project submission date and I'll write something and give it to you I'll cheat you I'll cheat you just do this you know I can't deal with this stuff you have people like that so it's a very very important to you know like make assumptions do analysis both on your project and also with the people you're going to do it with and then comes design just okay you have great people and you also have great analysis you have this awesome plan but you need to design it too you know so that's also an important thing so from the beginning to the end what are the requirements to your software sir how do you want this your software to be executed sir within what timeline you want the software to be created sir this is the query session if for queries there are people like okay I just want a software on how to count you know how many mistakes I make in life or you know something how many times I want a software that tells me when I use my smartphone too much hey you have crossed five minutes shut it down and that's all he says because he doesn't have any idea about how to do this so that's when the programmers come and they need to figure out themselves okay how do I help them so we're going to discuss about the topic called system development life cycle which is SDLC providing a software solution conducted by a system analysis however now you might have realized that this course is particularly based on software even though it doesn't have any prerequisite if you have no idea about softwares and some courses like 370 and the other ones which relates to software you might be in trouble however nothing to be afraid of there's nothing to be afraid of because it's still a prerequisite less course if you put on your effort you'll nail it inshallah moving on some stages of system development life cycle and yeah, more of theory let's just deal with this so I have my pen over here so you have planning okay strategic study how do I implement this business study how do I make profit of this feasibility study how do I make it to good use 
requirement analysis what are the requirements now this part is very crucial because I just need a software you know, programmers not gonna give you anything it's gonna create a snake game and give you to that okay you needed a software requirement analysis is the big part because that's on that basis the software is actually created and if the one who is going to give requirements is not does not understand anything then it's our job to like okay this is what I mean so in this field among these options what do you want oh okay so that's what that's our job and also requirement specification okay I want a software game because I want to play games I don't have time so I want to play games and then you can say uh, sir there are many types of games there are action games there are RPG games nowadays online games you know like PUBG or something so which type of game oh PUBG I want that uh, whatever anyway so there are different kinds of requirements and we need to specify that it's not for them it's for us because when we mess up they're gonna come and say I wanted a PUBG you gave me a Fortnite what's your problem yeah, stuff problem like that so that's also an important part analysis you do realize that all of this stuff is our work the client is only gonna come and say I need it but we are the one who's going to put all these things and the last one design logical system specification you can uh, put 260 over here and triple E courses and logical system specification logical design physical design if they're smart enough they will tell you how I want my physical design if they're not smart they're just gonna tell you just create something for me I don't care well, what's the design or something so that's also again a burden that we have to do ourselves pardon the background lang mu music of you know horns and fan fan stuff like that because we live in Bangladesh and we gotta deal with this and it happens it so happens that I live in the main road so I deal with this all day anyways and these are some phases coding testing maintenance phase out and of course after you've done all this you implement this the 221 way right done moving on to the next nothing much to discuss over here so system analysis is one part of this course and system design is another part that's why it's system analysis and design which is very important for a good project more rather a successful project because projects fail if these two things mess up you also need to do good analysis as in here and you need to do the design as well both needs to be perfect or at least done one messes up the other also messes up anyways so we're gonna change some slides and we're gonna move to another one so that's not 340 okay this one so we have a weird slide over here and it intro again that same introduction to slide sad so information system information system or software application which manage large amounts of data you already know that you know java c++ c sharp ruby on rails ruby on rails is a framework though so don't put that one over here anyways this is the part we are talking about 30 percent of large IT projects were cancelled before completion completions 50 percent of IT projects are over budget so you had a great analysis great design but your budget like to create a game you need like course among millions that's not a successful project so stuff like this happens when you mess up on analysis and design and that is the reason we are going to focus on this first because all of our skills are irrelevant if our analysis and design is in terror anyways oh speaking of terror there's horror so software horror story bank of america spent this amount let's read this example there's a, these are some failed projects you know they probably didn't do good analysis and design so this you already know by now why is this course important okay so we're gonna move to real stuff like really 
essential things and uh, like definitions so now you know that system analysis must ensure that the proposed information system meets user needs and can be delivered on time and can be updated inexpensively meets user needs delivered on time updated inexpensively you don't need 10 more people to update that that's the idea so this is just read this out in a this SDLC again so okay speaking of the project in CC 471 we'll have a project you know the project which will be like you have to submit it before the lab ends and the project will carry a lot of marks and you will have to propose to your teacher in the first week that this is the project I want to work on you can choose web projects you can also choose software projects whatever you wish the teacher won't show hopefully won't show any restrictions but this project is going to be big you don't create a small snake game or you know add in some in dr java and submit this this is a real deal big project you need to make and that requires of course software knowledge or you know at least web web knowledge skills of html css stuff like that so that project and we are going to learn on a project so you can understand what's this course doing this course is making you do a project and before you do the project you are going to have to do system analysis and design all over the semester and then finally implement all your analysis and design skills on that project so it's going to be a live session throughout the semester you learn and you okay after you learned about uh, you know cost savings so i need to think think much that i don't need cost now you don't make money code with money what does it mean to like stay inexpensive well you don't need more people you don't need have to hire more people in case maybe in our case we have friends but still like you understand the idea that inexpensiveness means there's a matter of time also if you spend an hour to make a simple sum calculator that's very expensive because you need required you just need 10 minutes or 20 minutes for that i mean the whole software not just the calculator you can just write it in five minutes so that's the idea so that's the project thing and bef what's the thing about the project what are the steps of the project well the steps are planning why on earth am i working on this system suppose that guy who wants to make a software so that it alarms him when he's using too much smartphone so that's the reason of his he probably planned okay or you spend too much time on facebook scrolling down on the newspaper sorry news feed it kind of like it's kind of like the newspaper you know so the news feed and so i spend a lot of time and i don't want to do this so that guy planned and then he's told us that plan and we need to plan on how can i stop this guy now analysis the second step who what when where will the system be okay that's also a part of the requirement analysis you know okay he's going to go to office and then he will stay at home either way he will have his smartphone all the time with him so i need to create a like an alarm system that will like read the time he opens all his browser maybe the software will just add all of his browsing apps or even in facebook and does those specific apps they will the software will count the time t plus plus you know that he's using the software for that long for example you have this software you have our assumed software which has the ability to take more apps in it like add apps or something plus add apps you know like game boosters and he will add chrome viber facebook whatever i don't have facebook so like I just use it for the pages you know, I don't have any personal Facebook anyways so stuff like that and maybe even his messenger another any app that he wants that okay this is taking my time he will add that and our software will count T plus plus that okay this is the time look my T and my plus is the same how, how is that anyways so he it will count T plus plus and then when it reaches a certain time 
then it will raise the alarm and if it doesn't work for him there will be an option streak mode the application will have the permission of the storage and so the whole app will be cancelled if he crosses his time uh, we just hope that he doesn't come to our office and oh, I can't use any app now well you wanted it to be strict so that's our analysis and design now we have our analysis how do we design this do we use Swift do we use Android okay well, how about for both we need to know what his phone is off if its phone is of Android then we need to work it the Android way using Android tools but if it's of iPhone then we need to work on iOS you know object C which doesn't exist anymore probably and Swift maybe right so that's design and then all of these three steps is done now you implement this the final thing so that's kind of a rough idea about a project even though it was very easy but we're going to learn lots of facts about this so planning identifying the business value analyze feasibility develop work plans stuff the project control and direct the project it's talking about leadership yeah hey, I'm just gonna read out this because we kind of know the stuff Analy <coughs> analysis strategy analysis of current system ways to design new system requirements gathering the crucial part I keep telling you this is the crucial part process modeling data modeling modeling simply modeling just keep this keyword modeling design now this is the engineer part architectural design hardware software network infrastructure interface design database and file design program design you can set CSE 250 CSE 110 111 220 221 and CSE 320 421 simple you know okay implementation construction writing programs testing installation keep the updates you know maintain add new features for the new features you don't have to write whole new software again these are kind of like a part of the implementation and implementation basically is the part where you use all of your plan and create the software finally so there's nothing much over here and there now we're going to talk about methodologies okay this is also related to software so methodology categories are process centered data centered object oriented or oh, object oriented you heard about this one so what why do we need a methodology writing code without a well thought out system request may work for small programs but rarely for the large ones so if you don't have any methodology and you're like okay I have NetBeans and now I'm gonna start writing this code and I'm gonna create a Far Cry 6 or something you know a game or something PUBG 2 whatever that doesn't work that way you need to have a good design to create big projects like that and if you need a design you need like the design you will have for a game is not the same for an antivirus so the metal methodologies differ so structured design waterfall development and parallel development pardon uh, like they're really interesting terms you know rapid application development phase development prototyping agile development extreme programming you're probably fired up with these terms oh it's good to be structured design projects move methodology from one step to the other a good harmony structure and a step is finished before the next one begins so it's a step-by-step -step process a design process waterfall is just like fall even though it has nothing to do with waterfalls so you start from planning and then you fall on analysis and then you fall on design and then you fall on implementation oh it seems familiar it's SDLC right and then to the system however these four are interconnected with each other they can work on reverse as well We'll learn about them pros and cons of waterfall so what are the pros identify system requirements long before programming begins so before you even start your programming you know all the facts and you can say facts about your program but what are the cons design must be specified on paper before programming like you don't just like I told you that you just open NetBeans and try to create PUBG 2 you need to have a good plan and you like 
it is a long time between system proposal and the delivery of the new system because it's gonna take a lot of time it's gonna take a lot of time because you're going to go through all four process without writing a single code okay parallel development this is kind of tricky you can just look at the figure and memorize this one which is kind of like not step by step at all and depending on your need you will swift to your work for example you were planning okay it's done you were analyzing it's done design uh, no i need to do more design so design and implement oh it didn't work okay fine let it go again design and then implement and then okay no and then design then implement now these three types of projects you have first one you created a design how about this the second one you created like uh, maybe for pubg2 the first project is on guns the second one is on swords and the third one's like no weapons just fight stuff like that you know just kidding you know whatever these are three projects sub projects you created anyway one of these will is bound to give me good results so that's parallel development and you can understand that this is not going to be easy so that's without the pros and cons it will reduce your schedule time since you are working differently and you have divided the work but sub projects may not be completely independent so maybe hey do you have that code of you know getting uh, picking up weapons or maybe hey do you have the idea of you know looking at the sun or something these things are kind of dependent sometimes and also when you're maintaining the project you need to keep good communication because you don't want to have major 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 differences between the projects they need to be similar and paper document output still cause problems you kind of guess that rapid application development sounds cool critical elements case tools computer aided software engineering chat sessions joint application design fourth generation visualization programming languages code generators very technical terms how do we use them phase development you already know that a series of versions prototyping system prototyping throw away type prototyping design prototyping agile development extreme development so this is like really working hard you know and then you have phase development over here which is kind of like more like parallel development but still different in a way that you have versions like complete projects that those were sub projects but these are complete projects and one version second version 2 will not come until version 1 is created version 3 will not come until version 2 is created so this is the difference between phase and parallel remember that parallel works parallelly that means all of them work together so of course there are pros and cons on this one as well so users gain early process and software knowledge now that they can use in subsequent phases and issues with one phase only affect a small area of business core project team can learn from the initial phases and use their new found knowledge for subsequent phases the idea will give you a simple idea of that that if you have version one now you have completely created a program so version two when you go and update version two you know everything almost everything so now you can put your time on development and as your versions come your software is more awesome more awesome more awesome but that's not so simple because this is going to take a lot of time not to mention that the budget problem and then you need to supply critical modules because updating is updating you may need to add some very critical stuff and for example you have now a new system of online payment system and this whole new system is going to add to your be added to your software so it's gonna take a lot of work how long is this video by the way I don't know anyway how prototyping works planning and all of these three together analysis design implementation and then you create a prototype so then implement that again to the system that's how prototyping works literally but there are good advantages of this because users are actively involved in development because you need to treat, do all three of these together it's more like a group work in Brack University and then you have the methodology of working model of the system is provided the users get a better understanding of the system being developed 
it's good for self-learning that basically errors can be detected much earlier because you're working with all three at the same time quicker user feedback is available leading to better solutions missing functionality what are the problems the problems is it may increase the complexity of the system as the scope of the system may expand beyond original plans incomplete application may cause application not to be used as the full system was designed so unless so this is basically an idea that if there are unskilled people trying to proto do prototyping then that would be a problem that's an easier way to explain the con throw away prototyping throw away prototyping you can see it's very similar to prototyping itself but this is different in the sense that after analysis you also do design and implementation separate to the system and the design and implementation part themselves also when you do all of them together like prototyping you make a separate design prototype so that's the difference basically it's still prototyping it is very cost effective saves you kind of saves your time also and <coughs> Of course, I told you that project completion is quick, but there's a problem with this. Once again, the thing about skill comes over here because as the time is decreasing, this is really a good challenge. You just don't, you need to like really do stuff over here to get this done. So selecting appropriate methodology, clarify clarity of user requirements, familiarity with technology, system complexity, system reliability, short time schedule schedule visibility clarity of user requirements i told you i explained that how you need to get the information from the clients familiarity with technology don't study bba and try to create a software project that's just understand that with that system complexity try to understand the complexity just don't say yes we can you need to understand if it is possible or not or maybe if it is possible within the time reliability short term schedules and visibility all of them okay you can just check this one out by pausing good for you project team we already discussed this we're going to have a project and there there's a, there are some roles someone is a business analyst here BB comes over here there's a system analyze analyst and infrastructure analyst change management analyst project manager basically the leader over here system analyst infrastructure this could be from someone from BBA and this could be someone from the as well that doesn't matter what matters is by the way BBA people are good I'm not insulting them they are good we need them as well but when you're working with technology one of them because they will have a good idea about marketing and stuff like that you do need that only engineering won't help you need some basic business skills anyways project team roles this is for the project that we are going to do on 471 so that was summary SDLC the three types of development waterfall parallel prototyping and we didn't discuss much about the agile though and summary part two there are five major team roles which we will be implementing in the lab inshallah and with that ends our video thank you for watching